Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the power of broke. Money is great, especially in businesses. With money, we can take all sorts of shortcuts and make multi-million dollar businesses within a short period of time. But having too much money could also be a bad thing. When Damon John was a teenager, he bought a van that held 15 or so passengers. He used that van to pick up people in his neighborhood along the bus route. Not only was his fee a dollar cheaper than taking the bus, he would drop passengers off anywhere as long as it was within his route. In those days, each bus stop could be as far as six blocks apart, so there was an incentive to ride his van, overtaking the bus. Soon, the people in his neighborhood started to get accustomed to his schedule, and his little business became profitable. In no time at all, he had enough money to buy a new van, but he decided it was best to keep his old one because having a new van wouldn't help him make more money. His customers didn't ride his van for the luxury, it was because it got them where they needed to go. Besides, he was broke, so he needed some extra money for repairs. Damon, who is the author of this book, later became a super successful entrepreneur, which landed him a leading role in the show Shark Tank. According to him, he couldn't have done everything he did without the power of broke mentality every step of the way. Principle number one, when you're broke, you learn to make the best use of your money. One of my friends is the literal definition of this. I mean, he makes a decent living, like 100k a year, but every time we go to a grocery store, he would calculate the cost per unit of every item we buy in order to look for the best deal. If you ever go to one of his barbecues, you wouldn't see a brand name anywhere. The Coca-Colas would just say Cola, and the hot dog buns wouldn't even have a logo. That's because those are the cheapest ones to buy. I've asked him on several occasions why he has to go through all that trouble when the difference in price was less than a dollar. And he always gives me the same response. Warren Buffett is one of the richest people in the world, and he always makes sure he gets the best deal no matter how small it is. Even though I don't 100% agree with what he said, he has a point. When we get into a habit of making the most out of our money, we begin to really see what is important. Just like when Damon had the option to buy the new van. He was able to see that buying the new van wouldn't necessarily move his business forward, it was just for his own satisfaction. In other words, when we have the power of broke mentality, we make sure to make the most out of our money. Principle number two. Money is great for accelerating the building process of your business if you know what you're doing, but that's about all it's good for. When we watch shows like Shark Tank, we see entrepreneurs pitch their business ideas, hoping for some money, but that's not how most businesses grow at all. It's great for people who already have experience and looking to quickly start a business, like if they've previously had a successful gaming company and they want to make another one. In most cases though, giving away a percentage of your company just for some money is a stupid idea. An exception is if the other person has something else to offer. Perhaps they have more experience than you in running a business, and partnering with them will allow your business to do even better. If you don't know what you're doing yet, it's best to allow the business to grow naturally. That way you can afford to make more mistakes before you're forced to close down. According to Forbes, the number one reason businesses close down is because they create products no one wants. The number two reason is they run out of money before the business is profitable. When we grow our business organically, we're able to minimize both of these situations from happening. Let's use this next example. Five years back, when I took a course on old age and retirement, I learned about the phases people go through after retirement. Apparently, several years after someone retires, when they're done with all the traveling and everything, a lot of them get bored and start looking for new hobbies. Surprisingly, a lot of these people end up opening bakeries. Maybe it's because deep down inside, all of us have a longing to sell cupcakes. For whatever reason, they open these bakeries. All of them have something in common, and that is, they close down within a year. So why do these bakeries fail? Aside from the fact that they have no prior knowledge in opening a business, the biggest reason is probably because they're using all of their retirement money to create a store without first testing their business concept. Is there even a demand for baked goods in the area? Are there other bakeries nearby? Before you know it, they've spent a ton of money renovating the place, and they've yet to sell a single cupcake. Imagine spending a few hundred grand opening up a bakery, and then realizing you made a mistake. A mistake that could have easily been avoided with a simple test of concept. The retirement money, just like any other type of funding, allowed the retired folk to take shortcuts when that's the last thing they needed. Somewhere else out there, 
There is a young entrepreneur who is selling cupcakes from his home. Realizes that the demand for cupcakes isn't as big as the demand for something else, so he starts making pizza instead. Word gets out, and everyone in the neighborhood knows about the young man's homemade pizzas. With this proof of concept, he then uses his profits to open up a small food truck. Several years down the line, he creates a large chain of pizza stores all across the country. When we're starting our first business, or a business in an environment we're not yet familiar with, it's important to grow organically. That way we can take the most important steps first, just like the young man who ended up selling pizzas. It doesn't take a lot of money to create a successful business, especially with the introduction of crowdfunding sites. Not only that, but it's probably better to be broke when you start a business, because you will focus more on making money, which is the most important part. And you will also learn more, because you won't lose all your invested money with one small mistake. Remember, money is good, but only when you know how to use it. Even when you have a lot of money to work with, always remember to continue having the power of broke mindset and don't just use money for the sake of it. Ask yourself if the money used directly increases your ability to make more. If it's like Damon's van, then it's better to pass. That's all for now. Hope you learned something new, but most importantly, I hope you enjoyed it. Here's a surprise. I made a video on traction and how to grow your audience. It's not uploaded on my channel, so you can only check it out on my friend's channel by clicking here. I'll see you next week for another book review. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this. See ya!